Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. It's great to have you once again. I hope you had a lovely week. Before we get started, let us have the opening prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for another time in your presence. We thank you for the blessings that you have for us today. Take all the glory and let the blessings be ours. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The title of our lesson, as I'm sure you all know, is Thank You, Kevin. Our Bible text can be found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 20, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Do you remember the memory verse? Let us recite it together. Our memory verse says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Good, well done. Today, in our lesson, we have a very special lesson. But before we go into the lesson, we want to look at some pictures. What can you see? You can see mothers with their children. You can see them doing a whole lot of different activities. Maybe they're playing with them, um, they might be reading to them, or maybe they're just having fun together. I'm sure some of you can see yourself with your moms, or some of you can see your friends with their moms. As we go through the lesson today, we want to see how special moms are to us today. And also we want to see how we too can appreciate and love them for all that they do to us. God knew that we need care as children. We need all the people to look after us. And because God loves us so much, he provided loving and wonderful mothers to look after us. As babies, our mothers they feed us, um, they, shower, they take the shower for us, they clothe us, they teach us the word of God. They do so many amazing things for us. When we cry, they listen to us. They try to meet everything that we need. They try to provide for us. During Christmas, I'm sure you get Christmas presents. Also during your birthdays, I'm sure you look forward to what mom is going to get for you. And every special occasions and every special moment in our lives, our mothers are there for us. Let us see what the Bible says about our parents and how we should treat them. We would open our Bible to our text in Ephesians chapter 6. We will read from verse 1 to verse 3. Verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. 3. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So those verses that we've read, God is asking us to honor our parents our father and our mother. You might be wondering, what does it mean to honor my mother? That is such a big word, isn't it? What the Bible is saying there is that as children, we need to respect our parents. We need to love our mommies. We need to obey them. When they give us instructions, when they tell us to do something for them, we need to say, yes, mom, and do it right away without any delay. We need to show them that we trust them. When they tell us something, it is for our good and we believe what they say. That is what, that is what it means to honor our mothers. As children, this is a responsibility that God has given to us. And the Bible lets us know that when we honor our mothers, when we obey them and trust them, there is a blessing for us. 
let's go back to our text let's read the bible again this time we're going to exodus chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 12. so let's turn your bible with me to exodus chapter 20 and we're reading verse 12 12 honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the lord thy god giveth thee so that verse is telling us that if we obey our parents god will bless us with long life it would provide for our needs it would help us in anything we need if we trust in it because we are obeying our parents do you remember the lesson story? Kevin was such a good boy. Because his mom had told him to come home right after school, even though his friend wanted him to play ball, he listened to his mom, he obeyed his mom. And Kevin even made a special present for his mom, which she absolutely and completely loved. That was Kevin's way of honoring his mom. That was his way of showing that he listens to God's command and he obeys his parents. And that leads us to our key statement today. When we obey our mommies, we are obeying God. Let's take that again. When we obey our mommies, we are obeying God. You remember that picture that I showed you at the beginning, there it is again. Just as our mothers go through so much to make us happy, we also want to do the same, especially because of Mother's Day that's coming soon. But we don't want to only make them happy during Mother's Day. We want to make them feel special all through the year. And God will bless us mightily for that. The activity for this lesson for ages 2 to 5, color the picture that you can see. It should make a very pretty picture. For ages 6 to 8, we want to complete the postcard and think of something special that we can do to honor our mothers. That is the end of our lesson today. I hope you enjoy that. God bless you. Next week, our lesson is lesson 9b, titled, Goodbye, My Son. The text is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 40 to 51. And John chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. God bless you. Have a good week ahead. See you next week. Bye. Good morning, children. Happy Sunday to you all. You are all welcome to Sunday school class. Before we start our lesson, I would like to show you something. Yeah. Look at this wristwatch. Can you see? Very glittery and gold. And here is another one. Now, if I ask you to choose from these two wristwatches, which one would you like? This is golden one, brighter one, and look at this one. Okay, some of you will choose this one, isn't it? Because it's golden and brighter. But this wristwatch is not working. This is the best one, it's working. The inside is working. But here, this golden one is not really working. If you look at the time, it's not correct. Because inside there are a lot of things, inside the wristwatch that is wrong. That need to be faced. That brings us to the title of our lesson. 
of today, which says fix the inside. Can we say it together, children? Fix the inside. Now we have a memory verse to recite. I know you've all learned your memory verse. Let's recite the memory verse together. Trust in the Lord with all the hearts and lean not unto thy own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. We have Bible text to read. Our Bible text for today is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 14 to 23. And then Luke chapter 6, verse 45. We are going to read some selected verses. Mark chapter 7. Take your Bible, children. Let's open to Mark chapter 7. We are reading 15, 21, 22, and 23. 15. There's nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, wonders. 22. Death, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. 23. All these evil things come from within and defy the man. Let's open to the next one. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Let's close our Bible, children. From the passage we've read, Jesus Christ was telling the scribes and Pharisees that their actions and their words and their traditions are wrong and they were thinking they are doing the right thing. But Jesus said all are in vain because their heart is not right. So today, children, Jesus wants us to bring our hearts to him so that he can make it right, so that he can fix it. From the passage we read, say all these evil things come from within. And defile the man. If you look at this picture, children, it's full of evil things adultery, fighting, telling lies, all evil things, children. So, children, God wants us to remove all those things. God wants us to come to Him so that He can make our hearts be clean, like this one, this heart here, very clean hearts. All the good things are there. That is what God wants us to do this morning. Jesus was telling the scribes and Pharisees that what is in their heart is evil. But they pretend that they are doing the good thing. As we all knew, some of you are in year seven, you know the meaning of heart. The heart supplies blood, blood from one of the organs that supplies blood to all over the body. It's an important organ in the body. And sometimes we use the heart to, to say sympathy like I have you in my heart. So it's a very important thing in our life. And Jesus is telling us here this morning that our heart needs to be clean. It makes us to behave very well. If our heart is clean, we can behave very well. From the story of our lesson, we can see that Gavi was throwing an object in the sitting room and he threw it on his mother's clock and the clock fell down. And he quickly look at it the minutes and the seconds are working. He kept it there. And he went back again and took it. He can see that they are no more working. What did he do? He quickly took them to the repairer so that they can repair the clock. And the man looked at it and said, not only the minutes and the seconds that are wrong, there are a lot of things wrong inside that are spoiled when the clock fell down. The repairer knew that what is inside are wrong. So he needs to repair it. In this, this, this story teaches us that Gavi made a sacrifice. He took the clock to the repairer. He knew 
the person that can repair it. He did not just keep the clock there and said, no, it's no more working. It's no more working or there's nothing mom is going to do. But he made the sacrifice. He ran to the repairer to repair it. The person that knew about the clock. So also Jesus wants us to make a sacrifice because Jesus knew our heart. The sacrifice we have to make children is we need to bring our heart to God. Anywhere at church, children, another sacrifice is that you have to come to church. On Sunday when mommy said, get up, you have to get up. Don't say you don't want to come. Another sacrifice is that at home, bring your heart to God. Repent from your sin. Tell Jesus you are not going to do it again. And Jesus will watch you with his blood. And everything will be clean, just like the heart I showed you before. Today, as you have come to church, it's one of the sacrifices. And you are going to kneel down and tell Jesus, Jesus, save my soul. And Jesus will do it in Jesus' name. Children, let's answer some questions in order for us to understand the lesson. Question number one. If we haven't confessed and believed unto righteousness, what things did Jesus say will come forth from our hearts? Jesus said that evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, an evil eye, all evil things like the picture I show you, the evil hearts will come out from there. If we have not confessed our sins. Question number two. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, we read that from whom? Say, what does Paul say is necessary in order for us to receive God's salvation into our hearts? Said the verses tells us that we must confess our sins and believe in Jesus Christ with our hearts in order to be saved. So we must confess our sins, forsake them, tell Jesus we are not going to do them again. Jesus will save us from all our sins. Question number three. What Jesus said was the first and great commandment in our love for him to be complete. The first and great commandment is to love the Lord that God with all their hearts. The first and great commandment is to love the Lord that God with all their hearts. So we must love the Lord that God with all our hearts. So that's what Jesus Christ is telling us in order to be saved. Children, with what we have learned today with the story of Gavi and the Bible study, the lesson, the Bible text we've read, we can see that God wants us to bring our heart, to sacrifice and bring our heart to him, confess our sins and believe in him. Just like last week lesson, the memory verse, the memory verse of last week lesson, which says, be thou an example of the believers in words, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So God wants our heart to be pure and make the sacrifice to come to him. And God will save us from our sins. Thank you. That is the end of the lesson. The key statement for this lesson is, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Activities for this lesson. Here is my heart. It says, write the key verse, your memory verse, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, on the lines under the heart. Next, using the number of letters in each word as a guideline, write all the words in the spaces provided inside the heart. The word understanding has been given to start you off. Thank you, children, for the lesson. Next week's lesson is Lesson 80, The Troublemaker. The memory verse can be found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson. Thank you for bringing us to the class today. Thank you for answer class. Thank you, Lord, for all what you have done for us. Lord, we, are, we have come today, sacrifice to come to church and bring our heart to you. Father, come and save us. Remove all the evil thoughts, the fighting, telling lies from our heart. Save our soul, oh Lord, so that we'll be able to praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, children. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.